So, you know, we had to talk about Hamzat Shemaev. Hamzat Shemaev, aka Borgs, is quickly turning into a hardcore MMA fan sensation after he basically ragdolled former Bama champion John Phillips at middleweight. And then 10 days later, he goes to his more natural weight class of Walter Weight and proceeded to dominate another former Bama champion and Cage Wars contender, Reese McKee. What makes this feat even more impressive is that he only absorbed two strikes in this time frame as he made both men look like fish out of water. That's why even though the Swedish international by way of Chechnya is only 8-0, fans are extremely high on him, with many fans already comparing him to another Russian legend, Habib Nurmagomedov, and some already saying he should be fighting someone in the top 15. Even Hamza himself is saying that he's down to play in August and he's already calling out number 7 ranked BJJ legend Damian Maya. Oh, and as of recording, he's called out Jorge Masvidal, Nate Diaz, and Conor McGregor. So, yeah. <laughs> now, my initial reaction was to tell everyone to pump the brakes. Yes, his debut was impressive, and while he can turn out to be something special, we really don't know. MMA fans have already seen this story before. The unknown MMA fighter with an impressive debut, but he's fought under 10 times, and he's pushed too fast, too soon. Remember, for every Francis Ngannou, there are probably three Goran Relages, Houston Alexanders, and Soka Jews lying in their wake. So, for everyone on the hype train, please get off. You'll regret it. Alright, that's my video, guys. Please subscribe. Roll credits. But, in all seriousness, while I do think cautious optimism is the best approach for fighters like Shemayev, I am really wondering if we should pump the brakes on him, or if we should just let him go. I mean, is all this hype warranted, or are we being sold wolf tickets on Hamza Shemayev? Well, here's in my opinion why the hype is and isn't warranted. So I'm a semi-positive guy, so we'll start with the positives. Well, one thing I think everyone on the hype train is right about is the location Hamza is from and moreover why that influences his style. Hamza is obviously born from Russia, but specifically the Caucasus region. This is important because just like Habib Nurmagomedov, Zabit Magomedsharipov, Islam Makashev, Zabira Tukashov, and many other tough fighters, Shemaev is from the region. Now, I'm not going to get into the struggle that a lot of these guys have had, and that's seemingly leading them to have mental toughness, because I'm not a psychotherapist, and I'm not going to play one on YouTube. What I will say though is a lot of these guys have developed a very similar fighting style. For example, just like Habib, Shemaev also uses the Dagestani handcuff and to great effect. They both use very similar moves and they even approach their takedowns the same way in the sense that they like to break their opponents down with chain wrestling. This is a recipe for success that a lot of fighters in this region have used to great effect. Except with Shemaev, he might actually have a higher ceiling because he's such a great athlete. Which leads me to another point, and take this with a bolder sized grain of salt, but Shemaev might actually be a better athlete than Habib or Zabit. Now again, I said athlete, not fighter. Hamza is a 6'2 welterweight with a 75 inch reach and uncanny strength with surprisingly good quickness. Look, he literally didn't set up a takedown on Reese McKee because he knew he was fast enough to get there and strong enough to finish it. All this means that in theory, his height and length might actually allow him to get to spots quicker than Habib or Zabi. And when you do the eye test, it kind of confirms that suspicion. He's really quick, really strong, and super coordinated. Now, the whole point is to say that he has astronomically high potential. Many people have already talked about Shemaev's grappling and his athleticism, but the real scary thing is when you look at his older fights, 
you start to see that his boxing is really crisp. Now, I don't know what his defensive responsibility is like, but offensively, he might even be more fluid than Habib or Islam. And that's what should scare Walter Waits in the UFC. With that being said, we have to talk about the negatives because it wouldn't be a leg kick video without some negatives. So most of the negatives center around the unknown. There are so many uncertainties about Hamzai. I can't believe I'm saying this, but not going into the third round is kind of a negative because we don't know what his cardio is like and we don't know what happens when he faces adversity. Keep in mind, Max Roskopf was 5-0 and only went into the second round once in his career before he faced Austin Hubbard. Now, granted, Hamza is not Max Roskopf and has passed his two UFC tests with flying colors. But I think it's a legitimate question to ask if he can compete going into the third or fourth, or dare I say fifth round after having some trouble. And that leads me to the other negative. Due to the lack of adversity he has faced, we don't really know what Hamzat's chin is like. Now, in fairness, if we continue the Habib and Islam comparisons, we've never really had to see if they had a granite chin in their career, so maybe Hamzat doesn't have to show the same. With that being said, all fighters at some point do have to show that they can take a hard punch or kick to the face, and we don't really know how Hamzat will respond to that. So generally, because Hamza has never really had to face adversity, we don't really know how he responds to it. And that in of itself isn't really a negative, but it's just that pushing somebody too fast without knowing how they respond to adversity can lead to issues. If you push a fighter too fast too soon at too high of a stage, they don't ever really get a chance to grow and their growth as a human being, let alone a fighter, does get stunted. So, back to the title of this video. Should we pump the brakes on the Hamzat Shemaev hype train? Probably, as he's just a bit too inexperienced and it's just too early in his career to say that he's the second coming of Habib. However, does he deserve a step up in competition or maybe even possibly a person in the top 15? Probably, because the fact is he has mauled everyone he's faced and we're now in a weird situation of Schrodinger's fighter. We don't know if Hamza Shemaev is or is not a top 15 fighter at this moment unless we put him to the test. As for who, I would say his next test should be against a capable grappler, kind of like when Habib took on Abel Trujillo earlier in his career. So that's my video guys, please like and subscribe and please click the notification bell as YouTube's algorithm is broken. And I know it's a cliche that everyone says, smash that like button, you know, please, just please, I, I, <laughs> please, I'm begging. Uh, well, not really begging, but you know, please, it'd be, it'd be nice. All right, later.